This video starts on page 10 in your packet, and yes, it's the problem of the day. First thing you have to do is answer or fill out the percent decimal fraction conversion chart. That is part of your assignment tonight. And then you're going to answer a couple questions about that. Why do you think that all of the decimals on the front terminate? What is different with the decimals on the back? And why do you think most of them are repeating? What do you notice about the fractions on the back that terminate? So you're going to answer those three questions looking at your percent decimal fraction conversion chart. Then finish the bottom of this. Write each percent as a fraction in simplest form. Complete the sentence. 10% is really 10 over 100, which we know reduces to 110. 10% is like dividing by 10. So 20%, 20 over 100, right, which reduces to, oh, not 2 tenths, but 1 fifth. It's like to find 20% of a number, you can divide by 5. So go ahead and finish these last couple problems, and we'll go over this in class. Finding a percent of a number. This can be found in the sixth grade textbook. It's in chapter six, section three, and if you want to know, it's on page 193. They call it to finding a percent of a quantity. Percent of a number, same thing. Number method one. Change the percent to a fraction or a decimal first, and then multiply the two numbers. So 25%, I know, is 25 over 100, which is 1 fourth, um, and 1 fourth of 80, because I can cross cancel that, right? 4 goes into 80 20 times. 56%, well, not a very nice fraction that I know really well, so change it to a decimal, 56 hundredths times 23, use a calculator, 12 and 88 hundredths. 200 percent, well that's really easy, changing that to the decimal, moving it back to, and here moving it back to, you get 2. 2 times 153, 306. Or method 2, you could find 1 percent of the number, like finding one of the units. Multiply the answer by the percent. So if 4% of 800, mm, I don't know, but I do know that 1% would be like dividing by 100. That would be 8. But I don't want 1%. I want 4%. So then take your 8 and multiply it by 4 to get the answer 32. 60% of 30, I don't know. But I do know 1% of 30, it's like dividing by 100 going to 1%. So I would have 3 tenths, but I don't want 1%. I want 60%. So take my 3 tenths, multiply it by 60, and I get 18. 32%, again, not an easy fraction, not really a nice decimal, but I do know 1% of 700. But on the phone, is 7. So 32% would be 32 times 7. Kind of like this way. Find 1%. It's like finding what the unit bar is when we were doing bar modeling. Well, what's one of them? And then you multiply. Oh, well, I have five boxes there, so I multiply by five. Similar idea. Method three. Find any percent that is easy to determine Multiply the answer by the number of times that fits into that percent. 75% of 80. Well, I don't know that, but I know a quarter of 80 because 80 divides by 4 nicely. It gives me 20, and 25% is really times 3 would give me 75%, right? So if I take my 20, I would just multiply it by 3. 3 times 20 would give me that 60, right? 
If one quarter is 20, then three of those quarters, three times 20 would be 60. 60% of 30. Well, I could find 10% of 30, right? It would be like dividing this number by 10, because I know 10% is like dividing by 10 from the page before. So I would get three, but I don't want 10%, I want 60%. So I would take that three and multiply it by six, right? Three times six, or I would just do three times six, not six tenths of 30. I would do three times six, because one um, tenth or 10% 10 is three. I want 60 of that, so three times six would be 18. 66 and two thirds percent of 90, well, I know a third of 90, 33 and 1% is the fraction one third. A third of 90, 90 divided by three is 30. So two thirds must be two times that 30, right? That's what I would think in my head. Oh, it must be twice as much of that, which would be 60. Let's try a couple of these on the next page. What number is 25% of 36? Well, I know 25% is a nice, easy fraction. It's a fourth. So I'm going to do a fourth times that 36. And I can put it over 1 or not, because I know a fourth of 36, or 36 divided by 4 is 9. So that answer is 9. 9 is a quarter of 36, a 25%, or a fourth of 36. Number 15, 130% of 96. Well, what would 1% be? 0.96, but that's not going to help me. <laughs> I think I would just change this to a decimal first and say 1 and 3 tenths times 96 and then take out my handy-dandy calculator to get 124 and 8 tenths. I would do the method 2 where it says, oh, no, method 1 where it says change it to a decimal and then multiply I did method one in number eight where I changed it to a fraction that I knew and then multiplied. 80% of 90, 1% of 90 would be da -da -da -da, 9 tenths. Well, I don't want 1%, I want 80 of those. So 80 of those would be 72. Yeah, 9 tenths times 80 would give me 72. That's one way I could do it. Or I could say, well, I know 10%. I could do it that way, too. 10% of 90, even easier, is 9. Ugh, then I don't have to deal with the decimals. 10% of 90 is 9. So 9 times 8, because I want 80%, so multiply by 8, 72. Oh, that one's even easier. Do the 10%, not the 1%. What is 33 and one-third percent of 18? Well, I would change that to one-third. You should know that 33 and one-third percent is the equivalent fraction, one-third. One-third times 18, well, 18 and 3 have that 3 in common, so that answer is 6. Yes, a third of 18 is 6. Solve these problems using two methods. Okay. There were 480 penguins in a basket. Yesterday, 40% of the eggs hatched. How many eggs hatched? Well, method one says change your percent to a fraction. Well, okay, 4 tenths. 40% is 40 over 100, which reduces to 4 tenths. Close enough. Because I see that my 480 has a 10 in it, right? It ends in a 0. So I'm just going to cancel the tens off of there. And I do 4 times 48, which is 192. Method two says, while well, 100% of the eggs was the 480, so 1% of the eggs would be 4 and 8 tenths. So 40%, I would take 4 and 8 tenths and multiply it by that 40. So I know I'm going to get 192, which is, and that's it for today's video.